Hello all YouTubers, I am Dweather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for tuning back into this weather presentation for May 30th, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, I would ask that you please do subscribe because sadly, tons of my watch time has been coming from unsubscribed viewers. We are on our way to our next goal of 600 subscribers and thank you guys so much, by the way, for 500 subscribers. Let's get to our next goal of 600 subscribers, all right? So please do uh, subscribe and also subscribe to every single one of you. Please watch the whole video as well as liking and sharing the video. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. All right, so for today, we're going to be talking about uh, Tropical Depression 2E that is now formed in the Eastern Pacific and now could potentially become a tropical system, whether in the Eastern Pacific or potentially farther under the future in the Atlantic. I, I just did a video on Invest 92L. Please consider checking that out on the top right corner of your screen after this video appearing now. Now, Tropical Depression 2E is sitting with winds of 30 miles an hour, minimum central pressure of 1,006 millibars. And if you watched my video on Invest 92L, you saw that the pressure was currently 1,015 millibars. So even though the wind's a little bit weaker, the pressure is... Uh, a little bit lower, which results in some stronger winds. So this storm is a little bit looking a little bit more organized, a little bit more defined than Invest 92L over in the Atlantic side. And it's only moving at three miles an hour to the north and northeast. But this is very close to a landfall. But you have to keep in mind the warm waters it is currently sitting in. So let's dive into it here. All right, here is a storm on the satellite imagery. And you can just see it's just a hot mess here. All right, we do start to see a circulation. There's a broad circulation amidst all this... Um, thunderstorm complex mess all right there's a lot of rain central america could, could potentially pick up two feet of rainfall and even southwestern mexico as well two feet 24 inches up to 24 inches of rainfall so there's your satellite imagery again it's starting to get a little organized towards the middle of that storm but we're gonna have to watch it is currently sitting in waters that are ocean waters that are up to two two and a half degrees celsius above average up to four or five degrees fahrenheit above average here and uh, translating to fahrenheit Sitting at waters that are near 90 degrees. Remember, all you need for a decent hurricane is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So we are sitting at about 87 degrees Fahrenheit for the water temperature. So plenty warm enough. All right, so this storm can develop pretty rapidly because that's what these storms in the eastern Pacific can do. All right, if we refresh this, let's refresh it. And it looks like no update. So this is the latest data. And here's your low sitting at uh, 91 degrees west latitude and 12 degrees north. I'm sorry, 91 degrees west longitude and 12 degrees north latitude and this will make its way north northeast at three miles an hour so pretty slow probably making a central american landfall uh, pretty soon here and if you look at the models they say in about 24 hours probably 12 to 24 hours at most probably about 12 hours this will make a landfall so this is moving pretty slow all right this will make a landfall and some of the models say it's going to make a little bit of a left turn kind of die out all right th these are more short-term models some models do say that it could move up into the Caribbean. All right, let's take a look at these models here. All right, here's your models kind of taking the storm up Central America, Southwestern Mexico. All right, obviously, again, these are kind of short-term models, so we're going to have to see what they say after that. A couple models are going, you know, skipping ahead a little bit and saying this could go into the Caribbean, which is a definite possibility because of that Central American gyre. What am I talking about? Well, there is a low-pressure system and a big upper-level low called the Central American gyre, and this what this does is just sits here and spins this time of year, and that's part of the reason why southwestern Mexico and Central America can get so much rain during the, rain, the rainy season during the summer, and it can spin off little areas of spin here, these, these little tropical systems, and they can spin off into the tropics. So we're going to have to see, because that could potentially be the case here. Here are the GEPS tracks. I just showed you the GEFS tracks, and before that was just some other track guidance, but here is the GEPS model tracks. Some do take it into the Bay of Campeche, a.k.a. southwestern Gulf of Mexico, if you want to call it that. One model takes it into the Caribbean here. All right, but for now, a lot of the models are keeping it short term and just say it's going to spin around. What it does after that, we're going to have to see how the models play it out. All right, if you look at the track guidance, not many models take it into tropical storm uh, force winds, at least through the next week. What happens after that could be potentially uncertain because it just does form in the Gulf of Mexico will likely be light next week. So we're going to have to see. Um, only a few models do take it into tropical storm force, and that would be at the end of the week, in, uh, into uh, next week. So we're going to have to see, all right, because this could strengthen a lot due to warm waters, but we also have to look at other factors such as, you know, wind shear, um, dry air, 
So let's take a look at that. Starting with the um, precip uh, precipitation from the gem model here. Again, there's your storm kind of spinning around, moves inland, does strengthen, all right, over the um, the southwestern Gulf of Mexico, Bay of Campeche. Here is your really area of heavy rain, moving through Belize, Mexico. All right, this storm is very large, it's spinning a lot, and let's, let's animate this forward. And there it is, making a landfall. And take a look at this, 992 millibars of pressure here. All right, this isn't, it hasn't made a landfall yet. Here's the Gulf Coast up here, where a heavy band of rain, very heavy band of rain, will hit New Orleans potentially, according to the latest model runs, and moving inland, and then making a landfall on Louisiana with 998 millibars of pressure, very large storm covering much of eastern Texas and pretty much all southern Louisiana and Mississippi here. So a very large system, then moving inland, and then moving through the upper Midwest. So let's take a look at the uh, wind guidance and see how strong will the winds get. Well, as of right now, all right, the winds could get as strong as 43 knots, 45 knots potentially, uh, up until landfall, potentially a tropical storm. So we could be talking about 60 mile an hour winds with this. So a decently strong tropical storm could potentially be on our hands. Um, let's take a look at the wind shear because we know the wind shear does matter. Uh, this does prohibit tropical development. So um, the wind shear, again, um, actually, I don't have that. I don't have that up. So let me actually go to the Western Atlantic. Let me zoom out real quick. And now we can go to wind shear. Sorry about that, guys. And wind shear values are pretty high. Like I say all the time, sometimes if these storms grow, they can build a little barrier around them that can protect the shear. They can protect them from the shear and the dry air. Sadly, that won't happen, even though the storm is pretty large. But this could start to block out some of the shear. But there is still some strong wind shear around the storm system. So we're going to have to watch out for that. Um, if we look at the GFS model here, let's see how they played out. Moves up through uh, Mexico, um, Central America, some very heavy rain. And then it just, they, they just move it up the spine of Mexico and just have it dying out. So that's pretty interesting what the GFS does with it. If I zoom out, let me see if that actually changes. Sometimes the models have a little trouble with that. So let's see. So it moves up. Yeah, and they just have it moving towards Mexico now and dying out. And then something else spawning up along the Central American gyre right here. That's kind of different from that system. So 2E could turn into 93L in the, in the Atlantic. Or 2E could just phase out and another 93L separate could develop in the Atlantic. Uh, let's take a look at that uh, precip precipitation. How much are we going to see here? Um, and you can just see the storm's footprint. There's an incredible footprint of the storm system. This is through Monday, June 8th afternoon. So this is like at least a week out. All right, 10 days out at least. All right, actually, no, you know what? Let's go 10 days out, actually. That's not 10 days. This is 10 days. And here's a gem model, and here is your footprint of very heavy rainfall, 6 to 10 inches of rainfall plus from the Gulf Coast down through um, Mexico, Central America. Uh, let's take a look at the GFS model now, going out to the same amount of time so that we're fair. And if we look at the 10-day precipitation with the GFS model, keeping a lot of the rain towards Mexico, Central America, and potentially some heavier rainfall for Texas because the GFS model, if you remember, I just said that the storm does move up the spine of, the, of Mexico and potentially impacting Texas. So two different models here. We're going to have to watch and see what both say. We'll keep an eye on and be giving you the latest forecast on it. I am Dweather Dude signing off. Till next time. Thank you guys for watching.